Hello everyone, I'm Jerry Romine, the entrepreneur abroad, coming to you from Phuket, Thailand. Today's video is brought to you by Webull, and if you want to get two free stocks worth up to $2,300, check out my link down below. My channel is no hype, no drama, and no BS, and today I wanted to sound the warning that I'm seeing a lot of downward pressure in the markets, and now is the time to be very cautious based on the current market conditions. Of course, things can change daily with a major news announcement, but for the short term, I'm looking to be very cautious and will likely be hedging my high growth stocks and EVs, which may get taken even lower. We'll cover all of that today and let's start on a positive note with a success story from Natalie Davis. I was also in GNRC in June at $300. I used some of the things I learned from you in terms of chart indicators and trail stops and made 39% profit in a little over a month. Nice work, Natalie. I love seeing your success. Way to get in and get out and bank those profits. Right now, we are in a very tough choppy market and if you want access to our daily hot stocks, trade alert, and specialized trading channels, the link is down below. All right, Now's the time to grab a huge cup of coffee and hang on because this is not your normal stock channel. Today I wanted to put out a quick video and talk about what's happening in the stock market because I'm seeing a lot of signs that give me concern for the short term. The first thing I want to say is we are definitely in a bull market with most of the stock indexes having hit recent highs. I know it might not feel like a raging bull market with new highs because there have been a lot of sectors rotating with several sectors taking some pretty hard hits, but the new highs don't lie. Once we agree that we are in a bull market, we have to expect pullbacks, crashes, and understand that markets go through various phases. Nothing goes straight up, and pullbacks, corrections, and crashes are all part of the normal stock market process. I'm covering all of this because I want to be clear that I'm not fear-mongering, nor am I trying to scare anyone with impending doom and gloom. Let's briefly go over some of the negative market influences. Number one, the COVID Delta variant is on the rise worldwide, and some countries and areas are increasing lockdowns. Regardless of your personal opinions on the virus, the media and more lockdowns are something we need to be aware of as investors. Number two, inflation is on the rise and Kiplinger's latest forecast on inflation is for a 5.5% increase by the end of the year, which is the highest rate of inflation since 1990. Prices rose 0.9% in June for the fourth month in a row and check out these statistics. Used vehicle prices are up 45.2% from one year ago. Restaurant prices are up 4.2% from one year ago. Airfares are up 24.6%. Hotel rates are up 16.9%. Energy prices are up 24.5% from one year ago. Next up, we've got interest rates and they're rising. Then we've got federal unemployment benefits are ending. While all of that gives us reason for concern, I'm most concerned about what I see in the charts and technical analysis. But before we jump into those charts and cover all the negatives, let's step back and cover the positive market influences. Number one, 25.6% of the world has received a COVID COVID vaccine, and this gives us hope for a return to normal. Number two, unemployment is no longer a problem. Anyone that wants a job can get a job. Number three, from an AP News article, the U.S. economy grew at a solid 6.4% rate in the first three months of the year, setting the stage for what economists believe may be the strongest year for the economy in almost seven decades. Four, the GDP growth for the April through June quarter should be 12% and growth for the entire year will come in at 7.5%, which will be the best annual performance since 1951. So while I'm concerned about the markets having some short-term pain, there is still a very good setup for long-term gains. Let's jump into the charts now and take a look at the stock market indexes. All right, we're starting with the NASDAQ and this is the one that's looking the worst. We can see that we just recently hit a high, an all-time high, but if we come down and look at our momentum indicators, we can see compared to the S&P 500, we've had a huge drop in momentum. Looking at our MACD down here, we can see that we are also fading on our MACD and on our momentum indicator, our momentum is down. And what I really want to draw your attention to is the last time we had a MACD crossover. So we just had this crossover a couple days ago and the last time we had it was back here in April and you can see what happened after that. It dropped down Then the next time we had a MACD crossover to the positive side, which would have been a good time to get in was roughly one month later. So here this is on April 30th. We had a MACD crossover to the downside. And then on May 24th, we had a MACD crossover to the upside. And the first time I would have really looked at getting into that would have been right on the crossover or when I had the additional signal of a JR1. And I would have taken the JR1 because
because it fired and the price was over both that 20 and the 50 day moving average. Once that fired, you can see the NASDAQ was off and running to the races. And right now with a MACD crossover and the momentum's fading, I would really be very cautious in this market right now, especially for the NASDAQ, which includes your high growth stocks. For the Dow Jones Industrial Average, we're looking at ticker DIA. And in looking at the chart here, we can see we've got major resistance at the previous high of 351.09. And we can also see that we've got what's called a double top, and this is a bearish indication. Next up, we go down and we can look at the PMC indicator, and we can see it's performing just a little bit better than the S&P 500. But the reason for concern here is on our MACD, it is fading. And on our momentum indicator, we are also fading to the downside. So we've got a few red flags here. Definitely something to watch. And again, this week with all of the negative news and negative influences on the market, I am extremely cautious. And last but not least, we're looking at the S&P 500 Spider ETF ticker SPY. And if we look at the charts here, we can see we've been in a real nice upward trend. Recently hit a high of 437.92. But our reason for concern is if we come down and we look at the MACD, we can see that we've got a MACD crossover alert to the downside. That's this red arrow right here. And that's a pretty big warning. And if we look at the past history, anytime we've had this, I like to play what's called red light, green light. And if you get a down red arrow, that's a good time not to get into the Stock and then wait until you've got a green arrow in an upward trend. And this would have caught a nice little movement and you can see exactly how that plays. So we've got red light, wait, green light, get in, red, green. And then if you look at this big movement here, it gave us a red light. And then you can see it went sideways for over a month. We got a green light and then it started trending up. So anytime we've got a MACD crossover to the downside, definitely a pretty good red flag. And this is a good time to take a wait and see attitude if you're looking to go long or if you're looking to hedge, you could also use that as a consideration. And then looking at our momentum indicator, we can see that our momentum is down and we are definitely fading on this one. So on these indexes, we definitely have some red lights and warning signals. Up next, we got our question of the day. How can you hedge your account with a put? When you expect the market to go up, you buy a call option. And when you expect the market to go down, you buy a put option. To hedge my high growth stocks like Tesla, NEO, and Enphase, I could buy puts for the individual stocks. Or what I may do this week is buy puts for the tech heavy NASDAQ. And then if the NASDAQ falls, I can sell my put for a profit to offset the losses on my high growth stocks. While I would rather have my stocks go up in value, we can use hedges to offset losses. And if we buy puts and the markets go up, then we just lose our put premiums. Thanks again for watching. And if you made it this far, be sure to hit that thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, click on the subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss the next video. Peace and I'll see you on the next one.